today I want to talk to you about the beef that I have with Presonus, especially how Studio One is running on my system. First of all, I want to say that Studio One for me is the best DAW. I've been using Studio One since version one, and this is not a discussion about how Personus are running their business regarding the latest uh, subscription model or things like that. That's a thing that doesn't concern me and doesn't affect me at the moment. What I want to talk about is how Studio One is running, or better said, not running properly for me. The Studio One version that I am using is 6.5.2. 0.97444. I'm not using the latest version because, well, the latest version is not working properly on my system. And I have an issue where the God particle doesn't have the interface and also a couple other plugins are not uh, working uh, that great. The first bug that I want to show you is how the drag and drop audio files sometimes is messing up when you have a template. I have no idea if this happens in other situations, but when I'm trying to work with my template that I have, dragging and dropping audio files has a strange behavior. I have a, a couple of audio files selected, and now I wanna drag them into my mixing uh, template. I'm dragging them. I want to add the files just below the mix bus uh, folder. And you can see that I don't have that visual confirmation that you get when you are dragging and dropping files into the one. If I move down, you will see that now I have the visual confirmation that I am dragging files. And after releasing the click, the files went on top. This is strange and it's a really nasty bug because when I am trying to make adjustments and move audio from track to track, you can also see that I don't have the confirmation on where the events are going. Let me start a new project just so you can see the proper behavior. You can see that here I have no issue. I'm dropping the files, making cuts. I have the event showing when I am moving the mouse. And in my template, I don't have that. This is the first bug that really bothers me. And I've contacted the uh, personas about it. They say that they cannot replicate exactly what's happening. Maybe some of you guys are encountering the same bug. And this is particularly nasty because sometimes I am making cuts to the audio and dragging and dropping the audio onto other tracks. And that's really confusing because I don't have that visual confirmation on where I am dragging the tracks. It's pretty fucking annoying. And that's the first major bug for me. The second bug that really bothers me is how Studio One works with Isotope plugins. I'm a really big fan of Neutron, I'm a big fan of Insight, and inside Studio One, they are not working how they supposed to. Let's add the VST3 version of uh, Neutron 4. This is how it loads. If I wanna adjust it, then you can see that it's not great. If I try to resize it, it looks awful. I cannot make the plugin smaller. I'm losing the close. It's something really strange about how they operate with Isotope plugins and I have the confirmation from Isotope and from Presonus that it's on the Studio One side and it's not an Isotope issue. This is 
a really old bug already. I think it's from version 6 or even earlier, I cannot remember exactly, but it's been there for a really long time. I don't understand why this isn't fixed. Same thing with inside. This is how it looks. I cannot resize it or anything. It's just a bloody mess. I dislike that this is still a thing that's uh, going on even after the new patch. Even in 6.6 .6, I have the same issue. I rolled back from that 6.6 .6 version because the gut particle wasn't working. 6.5 has other bugs that are not worth mentioning because they were fixed. For example, if you are holding command, the text disappears. That's really, really strange. It's frustrating that big plugin companies are not working properly in size 2 to 1. Another issue that I have is with sound toys and I get a nasty crash most of the time when I'm loading up a sound toys plugin for the first time. The crash where Studio One just shuts down without any warning, without anything. You are losing the save point, so you are back to your previous uh, save. It's a good thing, but sometimes you forget to hit save, you don't have auto save or things like that. So it's uh, not a good thing. And I don't know if it's on sound toys uh, or something that Studio One is not doing properly on the back end. Now I want to address another bug that's been infuriating for me because I've lost so many hours of work because of this. I don't know exactly in which version of Studio One this button right here appeared. Activate all inserts. It's a pretty useful. Uh, button i use it all the time you can a b or mix you can troubleshoot it's a useful feature no doubt but how this feature is implemented i don't know if it's a bug or not but let me explain sometimes because i am using hardware i like to print my mixes and after printing the waveform i like to do another export and i like to bypass all the plugins in the session just so I can have a faster render. With all the plugins on, if it's a big session, it takes a while. I just hit this uh, activate all inserts button. I do the export. I activate all the inserts back, save the session, close the session and everything is fine. But if you forget to activate all the inserts back on, when you open up the session again, all the plugins from the session will be activated when you push this button. You will not have the same mix, you will have a totally different mix. And that's because in my sessions I have plugins that are on bypass. I have plugins that I am trying out, certain delays, EQs, just to see what I like in uh, certain scenarios. Let me show you exactly what I am talking about. I am bypassing uh, Neutron 4, saving the session, closing the session, opening the session, Neutron 4 is bypassed. Push, activate all inserts. Insight was deactivated, activated back again. As you can see, it remembers that Neutron 4 was in bypass. Now, let's see what happens if I save and close the session. Activate all inserts. You can see that it activated Neutron 4 too. And this is a really big thing if you like to deactivate your uh, plugins in the session for a render, for a being stuff. It should be able to recall the exact state of the plugins if it's enabled or disabled. It should be able to recall that. It's not something that difficult. In my opinion, this is a major bug that can cause a lot of uh, trouble. I also want to mention that this happened 
when Studio One crashed. For example, I bypassed all the inserts in a session and it crashed. Guess what happened? I opened up the session, I activated all the plugins and it did just that. Activated all the plugins if the plugins were on or off when uh, the crash happened. I wasted a couple of hours with the mix because of it. I think this should be addressed. I think that this should not be here if it doesn't recall the state of the plugins after a session is saved and closed. It should be able to remember after opening the session what plugins were on and what plugins were off. These are just a couple of bugs and one thing that infuriates me about Studio One because Studio One is amazing. It is my favorite DAW, like I've said, the software that I use the most, but it's getting frustrating seeing that the bugs that are reported are not fixed. Let me know if you have similar issues with Studio One or if you found out different bugs. If you want exclusive content, visit patreon.com slash 2probeats. I have their mix breakdowns. I will have more in the future. All your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you and uh, see you guys really soon. Cheers.